words do help people get involved. Words do help members of Congress get into power so that they can be part of a coalition to deliver health care reform, to deliver a bold energy policy. Yeah, don't discount that power, because when the American people are determined that something is going to happen, then it happens. And if they are disaffected and cynical and fearful and told that it can't be done, then it doesn't. I'm running for president because I want to tell them, yes, we can. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back. And uh, we are hopefully uh, awaiting Dinesh D'Souza, uh, who uh, we uh, have planned uh, on having join us. Uh, by the way, the, uh, the president uh, just asked at his press conference um, about ISIS if we're winning. He said it's too early to tell. But let's go to Dinesh D'Souza, uh, who is with us. Hello, Dinesh. How are you, sir? Hey, Steve. Always good to be on the show. Always good to talk to you. Just watch what you say. Um, only kidding. Uh, so, what, so what was your take, my friend, on uh, last night's uh, election results? Oh, Steve, I mean, it's absolutely uh, exhilarating and fantastic. Look, this Obama is so out of control that this was so necessary and overdue. I think it would be dispiriting if the Republicans had not taken the Senate. Uh, and now they're in a position, look, to politically quarantine this guy. Uh, and what I mean by that is simply to put some, you know, legislative shackles on him uh, and keep him under control and on his best behavior, at least through the next election. That's interesting. Um, having said that, uh, I, I'm sure you're aware the president uh, giving a press conference, which is still going on, asked about what he's going to do with immigration reform, the much rumored executive order, which earlier Mitch McConnell today said would be a big red flag, a poke in the eye. He shouldn't do it. And the president has said before the end of the year, he said this today, just moments ago, before the end of the year, he will take every uh, power he has in his executive authority and issue a, a, you know, a, a, an executive order. And uh, then if Congress going forward could come up with their own bill and it meets with his approval and they bring it to his desk, he'll either sign it or not sign it. And if he signs it, it'll supersede everything. So um, what's your take on, on that? Because you, you say that they could... Uh, they could quarantine him, but apparently maybe not. Well, this is the point, is that Obama doesn't get to decide what his own executive authority is. We live in a constitutional system in which they, we have a tripartite division of power between the Congress, the executive branch, and the judiciary branch. Congress, by the way, makes the laws. Obama doesn't make laws. And so he does have some executive authority. But my point is we've seen so much lawlessness on the part of this, this administration operating through the IRS, the Justice Department, and the Obama White House. I think what the Republicans should be doing is thinking big. And, and what I mean is something like appointing an independent prosecutor to begin to start looking at the different the divisions of the Obama administration to see where this uh, political discretion has crossed the line into outright lawlessness, outright political targeting, outright going after Obama's enemies. This has been going on unexamined now for years, and the Republicans finally are in a position to do something about it. The president would not uh, characterize this as he did the O10, uh, uh, which he, you know, called. Um, and now, now I'm drawing a blank when he characterized the midterm loss there as, as a, uh, not a slaughter, but uh, it'll come to me in a second. But he wouldn't put a label, a shellacking, thank you, Greg, uh, a shellacking. And this time all he would say when asked twice was uh, they had a good night. How would you describe uh, what happened to the uh, Democrats and specifically to Barack Obama last night? I think what happened to Barack Obama is that the American people finally, in a sense, you may say, snapped out of what has really been a six-year slumber. Uh, Obama, you know, in some ways, you know, he, he inspired so much hope when he was elected. I mean, people were literally crying uh, over in anticipation of Obama coming in. And they've been crying ever since, but for a very different reason. So I think what's happened is the crying continues, but now it's a crying of regret and shame. I think even the Democrats are beginning to realize that this guy, like the Pied Piper of Hamlin, has been leading the party to political oblivion. So it's possible that Obama himself will become a pariah among Democrats in the last two years. You know, you, your, your movies, your great movies have been aimed at the American people, and they spoke yesterday. At the press conference, the president was uh, asked again to comment and weigh in on what happened. We only have 30 seconds. He said, I heard, I heard the message from the people who voted, but I also heard the message from the two-thirds who did not vote. In other words, I don't think he's convinced. 
Right. I think he has this idea that if people don't vote, they're casting silent votes for him. And this is just a measure of his own uh, unimaginable and unspeakable narcissism. All right. Gotcha. Uh, Dinesh, got to go. Appreciate it. Always great to talk to you. Tom DeLay is next, folks. Don't go away.